Hey guys, that's your commander today, my Shadow Legends, with another champion guy, this time on Manaya. Post buff Manaya. Did the buff go far enough? Is she good now? I personally thought she was pretty crappy before today. Let's find out how she is now, right? Let's start by taking a look at what the actual buff was. Uh, starting with her mending ways. This is her A2 ability, okay? The old version attacks one enemy. Heals this champion and the ally with the lowest HP by 10,000 HP. And then has a 75% chance, could be bucked up to 100, of placing a heal reduction uh, debuff on all enemies for two turns. 100% heal reduction. It was buffed to attack one enemy, heals this champion and the ally with the lowest HP by 30% of this champion's max HP. That's going to be a lot better than 10,000 HP, hopefully. And then has a 100% chance of placing heal reduction and a leech now on all enemies for two turns. So they added the leech and they beefed up the heal. These debuffs cannot be resisted if Coronar is on the same team. So they gave her an extra Coronar companion boost as well. Beauty's Allure is her old, old or her, her current A3 ability. Heals all allies. It used to be heal all allies by 40% of their max HP. Plays a block debuff buff for two turns on champions under increased defense. If a champion's fully healed by this skill, also places a shield buff on them for two turns, 25% of this champion's max HP. What a crappy ability, right? Uh, we go to Beauty's Allure, the new version. Heals all allies by 40% of their max HP, so that's the same. Places a block debuff buff for two turns, no conditions. They don't have to be under increased defense that she doesn't even have, right? That's good. Uh, if the champion's fully healed by the skill, also places a shield. Two turns, 25% of uh, the champion's HP. So the only thing they changed there is the conditionality of the block debuffs. Now her lover's sacrifice pass of the old version fills the turn meter of all allies by 20% when this champion is killed. Revives this champion by 75% or excuse me, with 75% HP when killed if Coronar is on the same team. The new version. Fills the champions, uh, fills the term meter of all cha allies. Gosh, if I can read, that'd be great. By 20% and heals them by 20% of this champion's max HP. So they added the heal. Everything else is the same. So there's no doubt about it, guys. I mean, it's a, uh it's a decent buff, right? It really is. It made her, it took her from one of the most underwhelming kind of healer supports to at least a healer support with a bit of utility, right? I love that they added the, the leech here. I love that they fixed the conditionality of the block debuffs. Now, that all being said, as she also has a speed aura in all battles by 19%. With that all being said, I still don't consider her to be an elite healer or, I mean, she's got decent heals. I guess that's her best thing going, right, is the heals. I don't consider her to be an elite legendary champion. Like, I'd still be kind of bummed uh, if I pulled her from a sacred shard, personally, personally. Uh, that being said, at least she's not, like, absolute vault guard you know just in the vault in no use case whatsoever she can be fun and we're going to show her played alongside coronar in today's video we'll probably have a more in-depth guide on coronar maybe following up in the next few days here on the channel as well might as well i have them both built anyway you could do some fun things with these champions together which is really cool if you're lucky enough to have both of them uh so what do they give her now hell they give her a four overall score at hellhades.com Ishk. It's this is an awkward thing. I'm just gonna tear down the fourth wall here. I found over 350 of these guides in here on the channel. I found that people seek out these guides, the vast majority, not all viewers, but the vast majority, they seek out these guides because for obvious reasons, they usually just pulled the champion. And whenever I'm a little bit negative on a champion here on this channel, people kind of get pissed, you know? They have like, because you know how it is, you're usually spending a little bit of money sometimes and often cases, and you pull a champion and you don't want to go to YouTube and find some freaking talking head rando on YouTube being like, they're not that good. But I also think it's important to to just call it how I see it too, you know, for what it's worth, one opinion. I don't give her a four, uh, personally. I don't give I don't look at her to be that good. Uh that being said, they give her a four. Why do they give her a four? Is an appropriate question, right? They give her a four in, in old school clan boss. I, again, old school clan clan boss, you know, demon lord. I'm not sure if I would go a four. I mean, I'm looking for that block debuff to be on a three-turn cooldown, you know? And then you know, she's got the heal reduction. She's got the, you don't even want heal reduction. You know, uh, she's got the, uh, the leech, which is good. You know, very good. Um, uh, 
yeah, I probably give her like a three in clan boss personally. Clan boss progression, that is, you know, end game clan boss. I don't think you're going to be using her. Certainly not on unkillable teams. Blah blah blah. Uh, Hydra clan boss. I'm not a huge fan. Again, progression. You could you could to get some heals out of her, right? Uh, Doom Tower waves four out of five. Iron Twins uh, three and a half. They give her Dragon a uh, a four out of five. An Ice Golem four out of five. It's nice to have that block debuff that's not conditional. But on a four turn cooldown, what I'm really looking for is to make it an all-out cleanse with the block debuffs. I mean, think about the type of champions that we're comparing her to. And I, I promise this is not going to be a, you know, dump on Manaya the entire video here, right? Uh, because she's not that bad anymore. And it was a, it was a, it was a solid buff for sure. Uh, but I also got to be real, right? The game has moved in such a direction the last few years that... You know, kind of the standard now that we're looking for from uh, from cleanse from block debuffs in general is a three turn cooldown. We have a heal, a cleanse, and a block debuffs. This is all on a three turn cooldown. You know, Manaya has a heal and a block debuffs with no cleanse on a four, uh, and it's not just Pythion who's very very good. But it's it's a lot of uh, all the cleansers nowadays, right? Yeah. Elva has a full cleanse, a block debuff, and an increased speed on a three-turn cooldown. You know, she has heals on her passive as well. Uh, I'm not saying everybody needs to be the best champion in the game. And listen, I'm glad that they're buffing some of the, the least appealing champions. But I'm still not sold on her being a, a four. That being said, who can take advantage of Manaya? I don't think that her multipliers are relevant because her base attack is is it's not super low it's a thousand uh but we're talking about uh single hitters here you know if the mending ways was on an aoe maybe you can make some sort of a use case argument you could use her in hydra as like a little bit of dps uh with those debuffs as well uh but that's not the case i would not build her for damage but in case you're wondering a 5.5 multiplier is not bad on the a2 and a 4.1 uh, or 4.5 on the a1 certainly isn't awful either uh, uh, all right, let me go ahead and show you how I did build her. And then we're going to try out Coronar and whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, you like where they put the uh, the buy button, the, the you know, the, the, <laughs> the sale button? You like where they put that? I can't be the only one, right? I go to go to the dungeons or whatever, and I'm like, Burp! oh, oh, I didn't want to buy something. I wanted to click on battle. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, okay, anyway. Or champions in this case. All right, so how do I have Manaya built, guys? I uh, I will show you. Nothing too crazy. I did put her in kind of an arena-ish build here. Uh, not Tormund, but Manaya. Uh, I put her in a four-piece stone skin. And I put her in a three-piece supersonic, okay? Uh, why? Because I decided Manaya is a fairly easy champion to build. If you have her on the same team as Coronar, those debuffs on the A2 can't be resisted anyway. And I'm going to be showcasing her with Coronar. So, uh, for that reason, I decided to punt accuracy. But it's nice and easy. All I have to do is put accuracy on the banner. And if you're not running her with Coronar, that would that would get that would get the job done, right? I do want her fast. And I decided to build her with some resistance. I have over 600 resistance on Manaya. You're seeing the game very slightly shift in favor of higher resistance teams, especially in the arena with Armands and and Sun Wukong everywhere, and, and just so much control out there right now. Uh, so I, decide, I decided to give her some protection for the arena, and anywhere else as well. Plus, I get the 40 resistance here, and another 20 resistance from the supersonic. I, I'll tell you what, guys, even if you don't have a lot of supersonic, or merciless, or, you know, slayer, any of these new sets, these 9P sets, man, take advantage of the 1Piece. Getting 20 resistance is huge, you know? It really is. And, you know, protection, stone skin, the same thing. Don't be afraid to go with the one piece. You just get a bonus, you know, great stats, right? 8% HP, whatever. It's like an additional substat or even better. Sometimes a plus one substat, right? Anyway, I digress. Uh, so I like her in stone skin. You could build her in a curing set to beef up those heals if you wanted to. We did a curing set on Knock the Paralyzer yesterday on the channel. So you could consider that or two days ago, whatever. Uh... Other ways to build her, you could put her in Guardian and make her super tanky. I mean, she has a decent amount of HP. So there's some different, you know, possibilities there. You could throw her in Perception if you're not running her with Coronar and try to make sure we're ensuring we're always landing the heal reduction and the leech on the A2 as well. Uh, we have a, a Resistance on the Banner. I have Defense on the Amulet. And I have Attack on the Ring. 
But the only reason I have this ring is because I have a trip roll uh, defense and it's supersonic and I wanted the three piece. Otherwise, the attack, although it scales, you know, decently uh, with a 1000 for a support, it's, you know, it's not for the attack. I'm actually just using it for the defense percentage and the uh, the, the speed bonus on the three piece uh, of supersonic. We have speed on the boots. We have resist on the, on the chest, and we have HP percentage on the gauntlets. I guess a shield set for progression and a bolster set for progression are also very worth entertaining as well if you just want her to be like a, a really robust support option for your team. As a matter of fact, I think that either of those, shield or, or bolster, whatever you have access to, is a great idea because we want to build a lot of HP on her anyway in terms of stat priorities because keep in mind, even though the heal on the A3 is based on your ally, H max HP, the heal on her A2 is based on her max HP, okay? Uh, okay, and the shield also, I should mention, is based on their max HP, so it's only going to affect the heals on the A2. She does have a continuous heal on the A1 as well, big version, which is a very, very good A1 ability, uh, similar to a Tawana Rock or an Elva Autumnborn. All right. That's how I have her built. Of course, you don't have to go all at resistance like I did. I just figured might as well. Champions that have a cleanse or champions that have blocked debuffs, generally those are gonna be the champions that I opt to build with higher resistance. Uh, so we have uh, stat priorities. Speed, sort of HP, HP, speed, 1A, 1B, survivability, basically, and then uh, uh, resistance accuracy, right? Depending on who you're running her with and where you're running her, obviously. I went with intimidating presence as a, uh, as a blessing. I will say, though, it's worth considering perhaps emergency healed. Uh, obviously, she's bringing the shield on her A3 ability, so that's, a, that's another option for you guys to consider. If you are building her with a lot of accuracy and going against like a single target boss at the end, like Ice Golem or something like that, uh, you could consider Brimstone. It's not my favorite for her personally, but you could consider it. Um, heck, you could even go Temporal Chains if, if you want to. Uh, so there's some options there for Manaya. Uh, if you are building with a lot of accuracy and you're using her in the arena with a Coronar team or something like that, you could also consider going with uh, Polymorph. Defense uh, in support. I went to all the healing masteries. I came down. I, I want lasting gifts. I really want to extend that de that uh, block debuffs on the A3 duration if I can. Uh, nothing wrong with going support on the accuracy side as well and ending at Master Hexer to extend the duration of her debuffs on the A2. Uh, but keep in mind, you can also extend the duration of the continuous heal off of the A1 ability with lasting gifts. Get a lot more healing going on the left-hand side. That's why I personally prefer the left-hand side. I went defense as well. I did get retribution to counterattack, thus putting out more continuous heals on her A1, and then I ended at Unshakable for the extra resistance. All right, guys, that's how I have her built. We talked about blessings. We talked about gear. Let's go ahead and give her a shot. What do you say? Let's start out in the arena. I have this team. What did it, I forgot who I even put on this team. I was doing it last night. So, uh, by the way, getting ready to prep for a World's Strongest Turvold video on the main channel, Ash Raid Shadow Legends. You guys can check that one out if you'd like to. Uh, but... Where is this squad? There we are. Oh, I was still trying Turvold on the squad. I guess you'll get you guys will get a little sneak peek at the world's strongest Turvold. What do you say? Uh, so basically any nuker, or really where Turvold is is kind of a flex spot, right? So I have the one turn stone skin. <laughs> Ironically, I have Turvold going first, which isn't the worst thing in the world. He can buff himself, obviously. Uh let's go after, I don't know. Oof, world's strongest Turvold, almost one shot Duchess there, not too bad. So I don't have her, I have her fast, but not super, super, super fast, because I might need to come in anyway and heal. Like, I want to take advantage of her heals. In this case, we're going against uh, Harima, who's about ready to go, and she could provoke everybody on the team. So I think I'm going to go with the A3 ability instead of the A2. I'm not going to get the heal reduction, I'm not going to get the leech, but the biggest thing you need to look at is the team that you're facing. Sure, we could sneak in the heal reduction and the leech before Duchess goes with her A2 ability, putting, you know, block debuffs and a veil on everybody. However, they have Pytheon who hasn't gone yet and he has a cleanse. So putting the debuffs right now would be stupid. So we're just going to go with the A3. There we go. So we get the nice shield because everybody was fully healed. So that's a, like a really competent ability. Uh, now you get a, you know, a heal, you get the shield. I like it. It's not, the block debuff is not conditional anymore. So we have Coronar guys in a, uh, 
we have him in, excuse me, a stun set. So he's really built for maybe a tiny bit of damage. But on this particular team, Turvold's built to do all the heavy lifting, right, in terms of damage. And Kornar's really built to be a... Uh, he's built to be a control champion with his A1. Now, obviously, with this sort of a team, everybody except for Turvold and UDK, kind of, sort of, uh, we got to be very careful about Polymorph, right? <laughs> I mean, that is the biggest danger here. Let's go ahead and try to... This is going to take forever, right? We kill... Uh, that time we killed Duchess, but we're going to have to cycle through some revives here, unfortunately. Pythion's going to revive, and we're going to have to double kill her. Which isn't going to be a problem. Oh, come on, man. I guess I spoke too soon. Let's go in with the A3 this time. Come in A1. Manaya, she does put the continuous heals, are stacking up on UDK right now. My gosh. Uh, I really want to try to outpace the revive here of, uh, of Pytheon. I do withstand that big, big hit from Harima, which is good because she's the biggest threat on the enemy team. I do not have a reviver on this squad. And, of course, we lose our, t our turn with Turvold, so that, that sucked. All right, now we can definitely use the big heal. So let's go with... Yeah, let's go with A3 because our, we really need you know more than one heal here. We need Coronar and Turvold to be healed. We keep losing our turns, which really sucks. Uh, let's try to... Pop her off again here. This time we're going to get her. Duchess down. Keep in mind, they have double damage mitigation passives, right? Uh, on Pytheon and on Duchess. Now, look at Turvold's health. Right when we need a pick-me-up, right? We can come in here and get a... Uh, Get that nice heal. Get that nice heal. Keep him alive. Let's see if we can one-shot Pytheon. We can't. Not through UDK. But UDK is almost dead just by proxy, by soaking up all those hits. So I'm feeling pretty good about things so far. Uh, I just wanted to buff uh, Coronar there. I guess I could have A1'd instead. They have block debuffs after all, but it is what it is. I think we'll still be victorious here. Let's see. Got to be careful of the A2 of Harima. Uh, okay, get him. Pop him off. Boom, boom. There we go. All right. This is a long arena showcase. Spent in one hour on one uh, on one team here. I can take it auto from here, but you can see that you know Manaya in this on this battle against this team. I mean, she's been a great little support for us. She still feels like she's missing like a little something to me, you know, uh, not like a revive or something, you know, <laughs> like one more thing that we can really count on her. Uh, even though it's super fun, Coronar, by the way, in case you're unaware. When Manaya's on the same team, he's attacking all enemies two times. Uh, damage is increased, and it's 100% turn meter reduction by 5% on each hit, right? Uh, I guess only one time. Uh, on that A1, right, if Manaya's on the same team. So that's why they're such a great duo. They're not a meta duo or anything like that, uh, but they're really fun because they're, unlike a lot of champions in this game, their abilities, look at this, Turvold on Turvold crime over here, guys. Let's take out Trunda. Uh, oh, and we took out UDK and Trunda with Turvold. My God. Uh, their capabilities get so much stronger, right? So much stronger when they're on the same team. Uh, both of these champions. To me, this is, this is how... Uh, we should, they should be putting out companion champions, like a Coronar and Manaya. Uh, by themselves, they're both... You know, I would say Manaya is kind of like a B minus, you know, after her buff. Personally, that's like my gut call on her. What, how would you guys rank her? You know, letter grade right now. Uh, I would say she's like a B minus or so. I think that Coronar is more like a B plus, you know, in a vacuum. But you put them together, they almost get like a full letter grade upgrade, I feel like. Because their kits are so much. You didn't see it in these arena battles. But obviously, if Manaya had died, she would have healed everybody. Turn meter increased everybody and revived herself because Coronar is on the same team. And as we spoke about, Coronar also gets a lot better. And you can have a lot of fun with the stun set on the AoE. Uh, he's a counterattacking every time if Manaya is on the same team, right? So he's got a little bit of Cupidus going on with his power passive and his companion uh i don't think they're as strong as a venus and cupidus together coronar and Manaya, but they're a lot of fun i've always thought the beauty and the beast were were kind of fun you know uh i wonder how much they had to pay disney for the licensing on uh <laughs> on coronar and Manaya. uh so we have this team assembled for a little bit of ice golem action before i let you guys go today uh 
basically this this team is Seer, but with no reset champion. So the second wave is going to take us a little bit longer. Uh, but we do have Coronartico in there and CC everybody with his Provoke. So it's not like we're under any threat of losing the battle. And we can basically try to kill everybody uh, with Walking Tomb Drang. Uh, or we can just wait till Seer to lap herself on the Karma Burn, right? Which might be the case here, now that I look at the team. But you're already seeing, uh, we're getting unlucky with the stuns here on Coronar. But he's a really good control with the turn meter on that A1. You can see he's counterattacking again. I mean, a lot of counterattacks. A lot of double hits. A lot of turn meter manipulation. Uh, really, really cool champion, really. Goes back in there with more provokes. Nice job, Coronar, man. He's got everything on lockdown here. I'm kind of stealing his thunder from the Coronar uh, guide that we're going to put out in a couple days. Uh, but I do love him in his stun set. I think he's a really, good, a really cool control champion. Having the stun and the two AoEs, the AoE on the A1 uh, and everything else. And obviously, Manaya really enables that. Now, I apologize, guys. It kind of strikes me now that I'm showing you Coronar and Manaya content together. But, you know, like I said... In her own right, she's a very valid healer support, you know? I put her kind of in the same conversation now as she's she's different. She's different, but maybe like the same sort of grade and I guess tier as like a an Oella, I guess, you know? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little notch below. But, you know, that's that's saying a lot because before the buff, I thought she was way worse, you know, like one of the most necessary buffs to uh, to legendary. So I'm showing you uh, Ice Golem Hard 10, uh, mainly to kind of illustrate that, yeah, we'll take a death, probably Seer will die here. But to really illustrate the survivability that she can add to your team just by being on the team, right? I mean, usually in most uh, Ice Golem Hard 10, it's so difficult to keep... Your team alive. I mean, this dude hits very, very hard. You know, we do have a reviver on the team as well in Elva, but everybody's kind of clinging on to health here. And as soon as she gets back to her healing abilities, she'll be able to go right back in and, and pick everybody up. Now, as I say that, Walking Tomb Drang is like, yo, what up? I got a complete heal on my A3, and I burn, and I instant activate, and I can't be resisted. And, you know, Nowadays, you can find heals, and this is one of the things that holds her back a little bit, especially as you progress and start getting a lot of champions in this game, as you've been playing for a year or two, you know, new players, sure, you can absolutely use it, Mania, Faction Wars, and, you know, dungeon support pretty much everywhere, but when you've been playing for a while, I feel like you start to look for those heals in other ways, rather than just having a healing champion. Let me give you this example. Uh, back in the day, I used to rely a lot on Vrask. And even after her buff, like I messed around a little bit with Woad Painted, uh, like those sort of champions to be my main healers. But nowadays, I'm really looking for heals to come in a lot of ways from passives, you know? Unless you're just broken like Marichka the Unbreakable or Wither the Crown or something with just insane heals everywhere and cleanses and continuous heals and continuous heal activations and the whole nine, right? Rio Bone Spear, some of the best healers in the game. I I'm always looking at a healer with a cynical or skeptical eye of, what else you got for me, you know? Got a good revive, and at least Manaya is bringing other stuff to the table now, right? I like that she has that leech. I like that the she can actually place the block debuffs now. So she's got a little bit more utility, which is something to get a little bit excited about. Something to at least get you guys to consider removing her from your vault, right? Let me ask you guys, we're nearing the end of the video here, and this is not this is far from a speed run, but everybody's staying pretty healthy for the most part. I don't think we've even had to revive. Granted, Manaya is not looking too great right now, but that heal, that continuous heals on her A1, I mean, they add up, right? Which is part of the reason that we want her fast. She's got it on Coronar, on herself. She's got it on uh, a few on Seer, basically a complete heal now on Seer, thanks to the continuous heals. So... What do you think? What do you think of Manaya, guys? Do you think I was too hard on her? Hopefully, I didn't turn anybody off. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm the type of guy who I like someone, like not just Raid Shadow Legends or gaming content, just in life. I really prefer someone's honest take 
versus someone who's just like, even if I disagree with them, right? Versus, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm right all the time. I'm not, you know, but I would prefer someone's honest take on a champion versus just saying that everybody's awesome. If I'm going to do that, then what am I here for? You know? Uh, so hopefully you don't feel like I was unfair to her after her buff, her big time in the, in the sun to shine. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think she's still a, a, an average or so legendary champion in the game, but Hey, if you're looking for support and some heals, she's got you covered there. A uh, little bit of debuffs as well. Uh, let's see how we do in terms of, I'm curious to see who will heal the most on this team between Elva and all those heals and the continuous heals that we're seeing stack up a lot here. What is the power of one healing passive versus a ton of healing active ability from Manaya and Elva? I don't know the answer, but I can't wait to see here. So let's see. We go in. If we can, Sir, you want to just karma burn this down or you want to instant activate walking tomb drang? Anything? Can we end this battle after six minutes here? Usually I cut these battles and I just come to you at the end, but I was blabbing so much in this video that you caught me in a mood today, guys. All right, we go in there, get a nice little instant activation. One more shot. There it is, finally. All right, turn multi battle off. Yada, yada. 2.4 million in heals. 1.8 million, though, in heals from Elva. But then you're seeing, obviously, Walking Tomb Dragon almost a million in heals with that amazing A3. But you're also seeing uh, the results from the Leech, you know, that's not going to be attributed to Manaya. So keep that in mind. Obviously, that's a freaking boatload of healing that's for dang sure right uh retaliation will sell we'll sell this as well guys that's the guy let me know what you think in the comments below and keep the champion god request coming much love and as always take care guys